Worship on Good Friday ends in darkness and silence. There is nothing left, and why would there be? Jesus keeps his word. There's nothing left here. There's no one left. And that seems especially odd with all of the characters we've met during this holy week. On Palm Sunday, there were priests and scribes, crowds and soldiers, Jesus and Pilate, Barabbas and the two bandits, Mary and Salome, and even the centurion and Joseph of Arimathea. Last night, on Monday Thursday, we heard Mark's account of Jesus eating with the tax collectors. Jesus was there with the crowds and Levi, along with the tax collectors, sinners, and disciples, as well as the scribes of the Pharisees who watched on. And tonight, before we hear the Passion according to John, we have an excerpt from the twelfth chapter of John's Gospel, verses 10 through 33, where again we find more characters. There are some Greeks, and Philip, Jesus, and Andrew. More names, more faces, more people written into this story of what God is doing through Jesus, who is the Christ. More nameless masses that we stand amid, coming with the simple request, Lord, we wish to see Jesus. We all want to see Jesus. Mary and Mary wanted to see Jesus, at least where his body was laid, after Joseph of Arimathea took it on Sunday. The scribes wanted to see Jesus, especially as he was eating with the tax collectors and the sinners, so that they could question, inquire, and persecute why he would eat with them on Monday Thursday. We want to see Jesus because we know that death is in the air. Fear is lingering. The clocks are about to stop. Can you feel it? That low rumbling coming closer. That ominous sound coming in. A shaking of our core, sneaking in the incoming darkness. That rumble is not thunder in the distance, but the rumbling stomach of the hungry tomb, as death is licking its lips and preparing to feed. There's an artistic tradition that can be traced back to the 11th century, wherein hell is depicted as a large beast with its mouth open. Through its teeth, you can see fires and tortures, the damned and demons of all kinds. The name for this sort of image is hell mouth or the jaws of hell. This kind of image has been traditionally used to depict the last judgment as wayward souls are devoured by the jowls of hell, or, more particular for tonight, the harrowing of hell, that belief that from the crucifixion on Good Friday, through the mysterious joys that await us in the garden three days from now, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ descends into hell and liberates those caught in the belly of the beast, leading a parade of promised hope out of the darkness, out of death, and into eternity, leaving nothing behind him. Tonight, when the last portion of John's Gospel is read and the last candle extinguished, 
there will be nothing left. And why would there be? Jesus keeps his word. Speaking to the Greeks, Christ says clearly, Now is the judgment on this cosmos. Now shall the archon of this cosmos be cast out, and when I am lifted up from the earth, will drag everyone to me. Hear that again. I will drag everyone to me. Not ask, nor simply invite, but drag. Drag out of the darkness, out of the mud, drag out of the death and damnation, out of the petty feuds and sibling rivalries, out of the political tensions, cultural dominations, and grievous misunderstandings. Christ will drag us out, despite ourselves, in spite of ourselves. Christ will drag us out so that Christ can gather us in. It's why there is nothing left here, because Christ has gathered us in. All of the characters, the good, the bad, and the otherwise, held in the hands of Christ our Savior, nestled like an egg in a basket and carried forward. It's why this place of worship will be dark and silent. For on this night, Christ descends into hell to continue gathering us in. All those who lived and died before his reign, all those tormented by their own desires and choices, all those who feel caught on the other side of a chasm, who believe that they cannot access the eternal love, sanctification, and salvation given to the world by the power of God through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ is gathering them in. Like the last egg to be found on a Sunday morning, no egg will be left unfound. Christ will drag us out. Christ will gather us in. Though as the sky darkens and the night descends, there is a rumble coming from what sounds like beneath the earth. The rumble that we hear is not that thunder in the distance, but the rumbling stomach of the hungry tomb, as death is licking its lips and preparing to feed. Or so it thinks. Death wants to see Jesus too. Death wants to consume him, to end his story, to continue its reign. Little does death know, however, that this is Good Friday. This is the day that Christ gathers us in, all of us. Not by our merit or works, but by his grace, his acts, and his love. This is Good Friday a title that confuses death which thinks it's about to feed, when in reality it will be left empty, hollow, and starving because there is nothing left. Soon, death will learn the lesson that Jesus Christ has worked so tirelessly to teach us that God so loves the world that Christ gathers us in. This leaves the tomb empty, leaves death hungry. This earns today its name, the Good Friday, that Christ goes to gather us all in. Amen.